When the people we love go missing, it can be a terrifying time for everyone. Mothers wonder where their children have gone, siblings hunt for answers that are buried beneath snowbanks and in the shadows of their missing loved ones. When someone we love vanishes into thin air, the heartbreak and strain it can cause can sometimes be too much. Welcome back to Norman Rebates. In today's episode of Vintage Mysteries, we shed light on the case of Paula Jean Weldon and the Bennington Triangle. Between 1945 and 1950, in Bennington, Vermont, five people vanished, ranging from a small child to an elderly man. Bennington is a small town and was even smaller in the 1940s and 1950s, making the disappearances even more mysterious. One case in particular, one that sparked the formation of the Vermont State Police, got its start on December 1st, 1946, when art student Paula Jean Weldon, a sophomore at Bennington College, disappeared. She was considering changing her major to botany, worked and studied hard, and got good grades. She was employed at the college's cafeteria to make a few extra dollars. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary with Paula. She was hard at work finding friends that shared her common interests while disentangling her own from those of her famed father, William Archibald Weldon, an industrial engineer and a designer of a line of popular home and kitchen appliances and utensils. It was reported that she was considering changing her major due to a lack of faculty in the arts department she felt she could learn from, and that her progress as an artist was somewhat of a disappointment to her. On December 1st, Paula told her roommate that she was going for a walk along Vermont's Long Trail to take a break from studying. She had asked other students if they were interested in going with her, but they were all busy and she decided to go alone. The trail winds for miles and eventually reaches the Canadian border, cutting through forests and across streams. All of that combined with it being December 1st in Vermont. It was a cold day. Several hikers spotted Paula as she walked along the trail, one even warning her that her blue jeans and parka wouldn't be sufficient in keeping her warm on her hike. But Paula went anyway on the route north, leaving behind her money, clothes, and an uncashed check from her parents. No one ever saw Paula Jean again, at least that the police can confirm. Her roommate at first assumed that, when she didn't return by nightfall, that Paula was having a late night study session in the library and went to bed, hoping to see her in the morning. When Paula was nowhere to be found the next day, her roommate became concerned. She hadn't been in during the night either. Her bed and other belongings were completely undisturbed, and her roommate contacted campus security. An older couple hiking behind her alleged that she'd turned a corner, and by the time they turned that same corner, she had completely vanished. According to university procedures, if a student was going to be off campus late at night, they were expected to sign out at the main office. Paula Jean's name was not on the list, indicating that she hadn't intended to be off campus for that long. The sheriff was called in to help with the investigation, and the college closed for a few days so students and staff could aid in the search for Paula Jean. Eventually, the fire brigade and National Guard were called in to aid the search. As to be expected, numerous rumors swirled around the college about what could have befallen Paula, ranging from a suicide and a murder to a case of amnesia. As stated previously, there was no state police department for Vermont at the time, which hampered the investigation significantly in that there was no central hub for people to go to with information and a lack of systematic coordination between agencies and individuals involved in her search. The result? Various groups with no direction that oftentimes searched the same areas multiple times, while others weren't searched for some time, if at all. Eventually, the Connecticut State Police Force was called in to assist the search. Investigators from Connecticut eventually found a man whose name was never released to the public, who lived not far from the route that Paula would have taken to get to the Long Trail. He reportedly was having an argument with his girlfriend at the time, and not long after Paula passed his home, left. He gave several different versions of events, from going to his shack, which I assume is some sort of shed or man cave, to spend the night alone, or driving his truck up to the travel portion of the trail to spend the night. And reportedly, his friends told police that the man had mentioned knowing where Paula was buried within 100 feet of each other. However, when questioned by the investigation, the man claimed that it was just a joke and he had no idea where Paula Jean was. After weeks of searching and with no body, no forensic evidence, and no evidence of a crime having even been committed, the case sadly went cold. Within a year of the disappearance, the Vermont State Police was formed for similar cases such as this. Paula's disappearance inspired a book, Shirley Jackson's Hangs a Man, and a short story, The Missing Girl, also by Shirley Jackson, included in a short story anthology titled Just an Ordinary Day. What exactly was going on in Bennington, Vermont between 1945 and 1950? The area, dubbed the Bennington Triangle by author Joseph A. Citro, has drawn some conclusions about the similarity to the Bermuda and Bridgewater Triangles. The disappearances in the Bennington Triangle all seem to center around the Glastonbury Mountain and the towns around it, including Bennington. 
The disappearances all occurred in October, November, or December. The first of these disappearances, Mitty Rivers, vanished on November 12, 1945. Mitty was a 74-year-old hunter leading a group of four others up to the mountains. He got ahead of his group and was never seen again on the way back, leaving a single rifle cartridge in the stream. He was an experienced outdoorsman, leaving some to wonder if Mitty had succumbed to the elements or if something more sinister had happened. The second disappearance was Paula, and as we know, no evidence was found to indicate that her disappearance was a crime. Number three was James Tedford, a veteran. He disappeared exactly three years to the day after Paula. He'd been in St. Albans visiting his relatives and was on a bus back to his home. But here's where the story gets a little weird. The last stop before arriving at Bennington, Tedford was on board the bus, but by the time the bus rolled into Bennington's first stop, he was completely gone. His luggage was still in a luggage rack, and an open bus timetable was found on his seat, but no trace of Tedford was ever found. The fourth disappearance was eight-year-old Paul Jeffson. On October 12, 1950, Paul accompanied his mother in a truck to go and feed their pigs. His mother was gone for about an hour feeding the pigs, while Paul stayed behind at the truck. When she returned, he was nowhere to be found. According to local legend, bloodhounds tracked Paul's scent to the exact place that Paula Weldon disappeared, but I have found no reports confirming this statement. The final disappearance occurred just 16 days later, on October 28, 1950. Frida Langer and her cousin Herbert Elsner were camping near the Somerset Reservoir and decided to go on a hike. During their hike, she fell into a stream and decided to go back to the campsite for dry clothes. Elsner agreed to wait for her there, but when she didn't return to him, he made his way back to the campsite to see what had happened to cause the delay. He was told that Frida had never returned to the campsite. For two weeks, searches were conducted, including air and ground searches, but they found nothing. Several months later, on May 12, 1951, Frida's remains were discovered in an area that had been extensively searched in October and November of the year before. No cause of death was determined. She remains the last known victim of the Bennington Triangle and the only one whose body has been discovered. While the disappearances in this area are spooky, when we take into account the sheer number of people that are reported missing every day, nearly 1,800, it's not a surprise that in a five-year period, five people would go missing mysteriously. I would agree that it would be strange if, say, one a year went missing in that window of three months, but we have to take into account that the area is heavily wooded and accidents do happen. The distribution of disappearances is Mitty Rivers disappearing in 45, Paula's disappearance in 46, and then we don't have another disappearance until James Tedford's in 1949, and then we have Frida and Paul's disappearances in 1950. Although it is mysterious that two people would go missing in the same month of the same year in roughly the same area, we also have to take into account that the Bennington Triangle is likely a larger area of land. And again, it encompasses forests and streams and rivers and mountains. And there is the possibility that accidents could happen to somebody, especially an older woman, a small child, and two older men. The only outlier as far as age goes is Paula. And as far as circumstance goes, the only outlier is James Tedford. We'll return to the James Tedford issue in a little bit, but... All but one of these five people that disappeared went missing in the woods. And unfortunately, as anyone who enjoys hiking will tell you, if you step off the trail, it is very, very easy to get lost. As soon as the trees get dense enough that you can't really see where you entered from anymore, you can be in a lot of trouble really quickly. It's why a lot of people go hiking with friends and try to stay together or go hiking with their dogs. The disappearance of James Tedford is extremely interesting in that he was on board a bus when he disappeared. He wasn't hiking or hunting or out for a walk. Tedford's disappearance is in a similar vein of the disappearance of Louis Le Prince in France who vanished off a moving train with no trace. With further research, I discovered one article that stated that Tedford's wife Pearl had disappeared as well, 
sometime during his stint as a soldier in World War II while on the way to the store. I could find no other information on her vanishment to corroborate it. Though I can't explain how, perhaps Tedford, seeing no reason to continue his current life, wanted to disappear, but how he vanished off a moving bus with no one seeing anything is beyond my scope of understanding. As for Paula Jean Weldon, though her disappearance is a tragedy in its own right, I'm afraid I don't have much to go off of in the way of a theory. It's interesting to say again that Though it is stated that Paula was an experienced hiker, she would still elect to go hiking by herself when nobody could go with her. There is a theory that I saw floating around various different forums that Paula might have met with a secret boyfriend and disappeared into Canada with him because it is suspicious that an experienced hiker would decide to go off into the forest by herself especially given she was not wearing clothing that was fit for the time of day and the area and the season that she was in. But I couldn't find anything to lend credence to this, and I don't believe it's very likely anyway, given the fact that she did not take any money, clothing, or other belongings that could have been of use to her should she decide to cross the border and run away with someone. But then again, that's just a theory. Stay spooky, guys. I'll see you in the next video. If you'd like to see more of my haunting content, be sure to click subscribe and like, comment, and share. Um, anything that you guys just comment, share, anything like that is a great benefit to the channel and the growth of Norman Rebates. Um, also, I want to apologize for any background noise. I'm dog sitting for my grandma right now, but I wasn't going to have time in the next couple of days to record and edit and get Friday's video ready to go. So I had to make do with what I had. Also, I hope the audio quality is better now. I got a better microphone. It's not the best in the world, but for 30 bucks, it was what I could get off of Amazon. See, you can hear the dog walking around right now. But anyway, thanks guys. Like I said, if you want to see more haunting content, be sure to click subscribe and like, comment, and share. Peace. I'll see you guys in the next video.